And hey, I am Nathan Roshan. Welcome to another episode of All Aware Podcast. It's been a little while, um, but we are here. Uh, I am riding solo tonight, so it's just going to be me and you. But we're going to cover a couple little things that are going on recently. It is Easter Sunday, so I want to say Happy Easter to all of you out there. And we've got, uh, like always, stuff going on um, geopolitically. We've got uh, stuff going on here uh, in America. And we're always looking to uh, become more aware and uh, spread information and knowledge because knowledge is power. So that's why I wanted to come on here today and kind of share some of the stuff I've been noticing and seeing in the last few days and weeks. Um, Most recently, um, everybody's aware now, whether you follow the mainstream news or whether you follow just alternative news, or if you don't even follow news at all, somebody has told you now about the Francis Key Scott Bridge uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. It has collapsed and uh, the news media is saying that it is a uh, uh, it is a an accident. Uh, it was uh, unintentional or it's a mistake. Um, so you know, uh, first looking into that, some people, most of us, thought, okay, wow, that's a little bizarre, but maybe that's what it is. And then uh, after we've looked into it uh, a little bit, uh, some of us have determined. Other things may be afoot here, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go into some of this a little bit. It's been done on a couple programs. Um, there's different varying viewpoints, and some people go to the the far extremes, and uh, others are just saying, "Yeah, it's it's a mistake." So um, the good thing about news uh, is you're supposed to be presented with all the facts and all the uh, detail so that you can make your own uh, decision. And um, that's what's missing. Um, there's agendas all over the place uh, for different reasons for you to, uh, for somebody to want you to see it a certain way. So I just want to uh, show you what I've seen. Uh, I have listened to both sides of the argument. Uh, I've, I've read articles from various sources. I've read uh, the news and listen to individuals that are in Baltimore and what they say is happening. I've listened to the uh, uh, audio transcripts from radios uh, and things like that. Uh, Just not everything added up. So I just want to kind of go into that and show you that first thing here. So um, let's go in. I'm going to show you. So this is the video that's uh, been spreading spreading around. Uh, It looks like it's from a monitor or something uh, from a a business or something that's showing. It's got a pretty good view of the bridge. Uh, If you can see my little black and white mouse here, it's circling the ship. Um, That's the ship right there. Uh, Up here in the middle top of the bridge, you do have a uh, red light. Um, It's like a, a warning light for low flying aircraft and things like that to know that that's the top of the bridge. Um, so the first thing I always do when I research uh, is, you know, I just sit back uh, and observe, um, usually multiple times, dozens of times here. And if if you do that, uh, we're just going to stay on the screen without playing it. Well, let's look at the structure of the bridge. So you got uh, the roadway coming over here. We got some little light interference down here in the middle. You keep going. Boom. That looks good. Here's a a pillar pylon over there. There's a pylon over here. That's what's being held up. Um, Way over in the far right corner, you can see there's one uh, over there as well. And then uh, uh, we can't see it off frame to the left, but uh, there is a connection over there that connects to the road, that connects to the land, blah, blah, blah. Pretty self-explanatory, right? This is a type of a bridge. Um, I don't know if you've ever played that game. There's a a bridge connector uh, 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 phone uh, game you can play where you build uh, bridges and structures, and uh, then you drive a truck or car over it, and it'll t- you know it'll collapse or whatever if it's not if it's not uh, up to code or if it you know if there's weak spots. So it's kind of weird when I look at this. I kind of I see that uh, I'm kind of using my game analogy here when I when I'm looking at that, but um, you can tell that this is a, a top supported bridge. 
most of it, the the, the heavy structure supported by the uh, all the framework and stuff that's on the in the steel at the top of the bridge here, all the way across. Um, so that's that's what holds this road uh, and allows it to have a weight varying weights and pressures on it. And, and when it, when weight and pressure goes on the roadway there, the top uh, structure here, these cross members and beams uh, withstand all that weight and hold it together. Um, so we're going to start playing. Here's the boat, the ship, I'm sorry, the dolly down here. Um, I guess actually right before I play, let's, let's talk a little bit about the dolly. So it was, it was in port uh, in, Baltimore there, um, and it uh, was supposed to be going out to sea. Uh, it had finished what it was doing there, the container ship. So it was going out to sea. Um, trying to see if I can bring up. So let's look at what's going on. So this this is the dolly. This is uh, the port. Uh, Baltimore. So the ship was over here where you can see this little blue uh, icon over here. That's where it originally was. And um, when it left, so it left out towards the north on this map, um, you know, the northwest over here on the uh, Patapsco Pat River. Uh, and then it had, it actually had, there's been some varying uh, um, descriptions of this because uh, some, some people noticed thought it you know it just kind of went on its own and, and did its own thing it's, it's not necessarily true um it had two tugboats that guided it out from the port uh going northeast uh, northwest here uh in the direction of how this map is angled and then it came up here did its turn it did a u-turn basically in the middle of the sound there got onto the pathway um, if you've ever ridden in a boat in the ocean or I've looked at uh, GPS on a, on a boat, there are pathways just like on roadways and cars. Um, there are pathways that designate where, you know, ships should travel, where, you know, deeper water is and, uh, there, you know, things like that. So right down here where you see my black mouse here moving back and forth, uh, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a they're a thoroughfare or a uh, a pathway for ships and vessels. Um, so it, it did its U-turn um, as it started heading uh, at eight to nine knots towards the bridge here. This is the bridge here where you can see all this stuff down here. That's all the, the rescue equipment and the dolly is still there uh, aground sitting right there. But uh, it was heading down towards the bridge. The tug vessels broke off at some point right here where my mouse is at, allowing it to, to freely flow and uh, get out to port. Shouldn't have been no issues. Then we see uh, as it got closer here, that's when it started having problems. So um, we'll go over here and, and see what kind of problems we're talking about here. So you can see it right there. It's heading straight for the pylon. Boom. Hits it. Look at how this bridge collapsed all the way down. Now, that is not normal. Um, I understand it is a thousand foot vessel. I understand it's very, very, very heavy. Um, but the way that collapsed to me when I originally saw it was kind of was kind of iffy. Uh, and so let's let's run it back here. So somehow it got over here by this pillow, this uh pylon or this pillar support beam. Um, uh, and you see at one point this video doesn't show it. Um, but prior to it getting this close, um, the power went out. Um, for, I don't know, a minute or so, uh, and then it came back on. And then the claim was that when it lost power, it lost control uh, of its steering. So I, I don't know. I'm not, uh, I haven't been on that vessel. I, I don't know, but I know usually, depending on the type of vessel, you don't necessarily use lose rudder control. You, um, you know, there's manual operations and stuff that 
that allow you to still control the rudder, but maybe not on this vessel. Okay, so let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say they lost rudder control, um, but it is heading straight for this pylon. There's this huge, huge ass opening right here. So what is it doing over there anyways, first of all? Um, and why was it going, you know, fairly, fairly quickly, eight, eight knots, uh, nine knots um, towards this, towards this thing. Um, and then if you see here, when it hits it, boom, you saw there, I just paused it. That was the initial collision right there. There's water and debris and everything flying everywhere right there. And then it keeps coming, keeps coming. Then boom, that's the um, at the the point when it starts to collapse. And then it goes down. Are you seeing anything on this bridge that's kind of weird? All right, let's do it one more time. I'm going to point it out here. So remember up here. When you're looking across the bridge, you know, you're looking at all these supports and things like that. There's a couple of weird things that happen. Um, boom, it hit. It hit. Right over here, there's lights from uh, construction vehicles that are on the bridge. But right Boom, right there. There's a light. What is that? Looks like fire, right? Now, look over here. The same thing has just started over here. Right there. So, yeah, there is a light right there. Remember that red light? But right here. There's something else right there, too. There's the light. Then right beside it, boom. What was that? And as soon as that happened, the structure uh, integrity of this part of the bridge started to collapse. Then look right here. Next, right? Boom, right there, right there, right there. Explosions. You can even see the, the fire and stuff right here where my mouse is circling. And then that, that falls quicker. There's still something going on over there. And then boom. And now there's all kinds of stuff going on over there, right? So that's just a thought. Um, there might be other things at play there. Um, the other weird thing was in the same day, uh, another bridge uh, hit, I'm sorry, another vessel, another barge actually hit a bridge in Oklahoma. Um, and that was captured on film by some boaters. And uh, let's see if I can bring that up. So here's the, here's this one. This was on the, it's either on the same day, it was really close to uh, the same day. Um, you have another barge striking a bridge, hitting the pylon. So, you know, when you see this kind of stuff, it's kind of odd. It was going at a high rate of speed as well. Um, luckily, the integrity of this bridge held up there, but. Um, this stuff is just really strange. Okay. Very strange. This one, boom, hit another, looks like it hit another boat, hit the bridge, hit all kinds of stuff. Uh, and it's, uh, it's moving over there. There was, uh, there was also another vessel that hit a crane on a port um around the same time too i had i wasn't able to find the video i looked earlier on that one but this is some strange stuff going on here that just uh makes you wonder and, and try to think of maybe there's something else going on i i don't know um 
that people say, uh, you know, all, all kinds of things. I won't even go into them. You can, you can look them up and find them, but, uh, you know, um, very strange, very strange, uh, right now. So just be careful what you listen to and, uh, try to, try to figure it out, um, for yourself. Um, but just, uh, you know, use discernment, um, right now because, uh, it, it may be some kind of a some kind of an attack of some kind. Um, I have no way of knowing uh, other than from what I see, what I witness, what I've what I know uh, from my past, uh, and things like that. Um, putting it all together, uh, but uh, regardless, um, NPR was uh, stating that uh, four people have been recovered, um, bodies have been recovered, and then. Uh, uh, there was uh, one person uh, that was actually recovered and uh, placed in the hospital, uh, allegedly, uh, as soon as uh, the first when, when the rescue ships first got there. And then there were two guys found in a, in a truck at the bottom of the uh, the water there. And then another guy was recovered uh, as well. So, um, you know, those those guys, unfortunately, didn't make it. Um, so it's never a good thing. Um, you know, you know, it's, it's sad, uh, the loss of life for this stuff, man, it's crazy. Um, but you know, initially when I watched the video, I was so glad to see that most of the traffic had been, um, uh, removed from the bridge or blocked from the bridge or however they did it. So, um, that was also, uh, maybe a little strange too. Um, but I'm glad it happened. There's a few semi trucks that went over it right before, you know, maybe 20 seconds or 10 seconds before it, it hit the the bridge, the dolly hit the bridge. So uh, I'm glad that uh, most of the people were off that there. So uh, just, we'll have to continue the story, figure out um, what develops um, with that. So, uh, you know, I guess stay tuned as it comes to that. Um, also, I wanted to talk uh, a little bit about uh, research. I think seeing that and having to go through that again uh, here for my own self, it kind of reminded me that um, there's a lot of misconceptions about, um, I don't know, how, how to research. I mean, you know, everybody consider, considers themselves a researcher now. Everybody um, um, is like an armchair detective uh, in a way. And, um, you know, everyone wants to be the first one to know the truth about something and to be able to spread that news. Um, but a lot of times, and this is in the, in the truther movement, this is in, you know, you know, whatever you want to, you want to call it, this is in, uh, all of, uh, our attempts to, uh, be honest and truthful and, and straightforward. Uh, we run into this, um, and uh, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, a good way, a good method to research. Um, I'm by no means a scientist. I'm not a, you know, a professional. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what, what you would call it, but I'm, you know, book um, detective or anything like that. Um, although I am uh, an investigator. Uh, in in real life, I'm a private investigator. I uh, went to college for um, for sociology with an emphasis in criminology. Um, we did learn about the scientific method. We learned about uh, statistics and how to, you know, take extremes and try to find the facts and and inside of those extremes and. Um, that's the thing about all information. There is truth in all information. Usually there's, there's nothing really that is ever told that has, you know, it's just complete fabrication. There's usually some kind of a underlaying or lower level truth. Um, and that's what gets everybody to believe it. Right. So, um, uh, so what you need to find to do when you research is figure out how to pick the truth that are consistent in all statements. And that typically is going to be um, what actually is going on um, and what and what the truth is. And it might not 
paint the entire picture, but at least you have one part of the picture that is true. And then typically over time, you know, you just wait and eventually the rest eventually comes out. It's just how the truth works, um, how lies work. Um, you can only lie for so long before uh, the truth is just going to come out. So, um, you know, uh, you always want to get, and um, this is just my personal method that I've used for, you know, uh, 15, 20 or more years now. Um, you always want to get at least three sources. Um, and you don't want those sources to be the same um, or similar, right? So it might be uh, one extreme. You listen to it, it might suck, you might hate it because it might not be your cup of tea, it might not be what you want to hear, but listen to the opposition. Then you want to listen to uh, some, somebody you trust that might have your opinion or is a professional in the field, um, and then maybe get somebody who is on site. Um, for instance, if we were researching the Baltimore Bridge, um, contact people that Maybe you know in Baltimore, ask them what's going on, uh, where they were. Have they talked to anybody that um, was near the bridge? Did anybody see it firsthand? You know, obviously, <clears throat> if you get information directly from a source that witnessed it, it's going to be a, it's going to be more accurate than getting it from, uh, you know, somebody who is just seeing it on online or um, through another source. You know, uh, it just gets diluted as it goes. So you want to try to do that. Um, and then, uh, you know, over time, you want to develop a, a network of of uh, trustworthy people. And um, and like I said, people that are kind of in the know or who have experienced um, different those different things and, and not all is going to be the same. So, you know, you, you might maybe you have an engineer. Uh, let's use the bridge example. Maybe you know an engineer uh, or an architect or something uh, in your family or whatever. That'd be the first person you want to go to. Go to the architect. Hey, did you see that bridge? What is that possible? What's going on here? Can you can you tell me how that bridge could collapse like that uh, with the boat uh, striking it like that? See what they say. Um, and then you know you build you build on that, and then uh, you know maybe go to a demolition expert. If if that's kind of the route you're going and say, hey, man, is this possible? Is this what it looks like when a bridge is demolished? Uh, let's see what they say. Um, and then you go online. It's it's OK, you know, to go online, um, go online, watch videos from different different angles, views um, like we did. Go to a different go to Vessel Finder for that particular incident. I went to Vessel Finder and I looked at the route. I looked at the boats around there. Um the other day, I was on a, another um, government site that showed the routes, which, oddly enough, I wasn't able to find tonight. <laughs> I wanted to show you that, too, to show you the pathways and things. But um, it takes time to research, and you're not going to get the answer typically right away. Um, it's You're going to want to build um, you know, one reason why uh, I'm usually late to the show with a lot of information, um, even with uh, my co-host uh, Echo and some of the other people I bring on here, uh, it's because we are waiting and we are letting things fall out and we are gathering information because I don't want to come on here and just tell you things and be the first one to tell you them. Um, you know, that a lot of times bites people in the butt and then they have to backtrack or they have to spin something. And, you know, they might be a very, very uh, per, uh, good person who who's trying to do the right thing. And they just get caught up in, in the initial uh, confusion and chaos of any type of situation. So, um, you know, be open-minded to the fact that you're not probably going to get a lot of the information up front uh, and you might have to sit back and wait for information to develop um, or you might have to really dig uh, for yourself um, for, for that information um, in different ways, you know, kind of treat it like a puzzle. You know, when you, when you get a puzzle, you know, you, you got a hundred pieces or whatever and 
Uh, they're all cut up weird angles and things. And you got the box. You can see whatever the picture is on the box. But now you got to figure out, you know, you got red pieces over here and blue pieces and yellow. And you separate them all and things. You got your edge pieces uh, and you got your corner pieces. <laughs> right. And then you just usually you kind of systematically try to separate that out to, to build, a, you know, the beginning of the picture and then. Yeah, a lot of people start with the corners, right? You start with the corner and try to connect them and build that frame, build that framework, and then you fill in the frame, right? Well, that's the same way you research. First thing, you got to separate the the buzz. You got to separate the news, you know? You got, this is, they're saying this over here. They're saying this over here. This is what it looks like down here. What I'm seeing is this. So I'm going to put that here. Then you got to build that framework, build that frame of that puzzle, and uh, once you have the frame, then you can start filling in uh, the information uh, until you have the complete picture. Um, so uh, hopefully that helps you guys. Um, I don't want to stay too long. I think my my computer's uh, not going to survive much longer on this battery. Uh, I, have, I don't have it plugged in. I just reset up my studio here at the house. Uh, from uh, traveling and uh, I forgot how much goes <laughs> into that. Uh, one thing I don't have is the power cord. It's probably in my bag, but uh, anyways, uh, I'm glad you guys came on here. Uh, I'm sorry that I've been a stranger uh, for longer than I have wanted to be hoping to get back in here in April, May uh, with some more content and episodes uh, I'm going to also do uh, some more shows with Echo Hotel from Nightwatch. Um, and we'll probably talk a little bit about um, the next show I want to do. I, I want to get into uh, more into something um, called uh, Ingersoll Lockwood. Uh, it's a defense uh, company uh, that works with Space Force. There's some interesting things uh, about that company that uh, not a lot uh, may be aware of that we're going to go into. We started to go into it uh, in our Patriot event, uh, you know, live broadcast uh, over there in Claremore, Oklahoma, the last episode. Uh, and uh, I know a lot of that was kind of hard to hear and, you know, it was just kind of an open platform, so it wasn't easy to to probably follow if you're if you're new to some of this information so um let's get into that i th i think we're going to do that uh we're going to also get into some uh more information on how we ended up here where we are today um you know americans uh, our our ancestors uh kind of turned a blind eye to a lot of things and allowed for different regulations and policies and things to be put in force that has led us to a situation where we are now having to fight out of, right, as Americans and as a, uh, actually as a global population. Um, most people around the world want the same things, regardless of what um, you know, some aspects of society try to tell you um, human nature is the same across the world. Um, we all want basic needs met. We all want joy. We all want peace. We all want love. Uh, most of all of us want harmony. Uh, even the ones that act like they don't, they actually do, but they just want their own version of harmony, which typically isn't. Uh, conducive to uh, the rest of us. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, so we're going to get into some um, information about, you know, the true reg uh, laws, really, common law, um, and the difference between uh, the types of laws, what our real history is here in the, in the United States of America, and, you know, how are we... Um, you know, how did we get subjected to kind of no rights and uh, being able to be trampled on and things like that? Um, is it something we did? Yeah, it actually probably is. It is. Um, 
and uh, how we can get out of it. So um, thanks for tuning in to another episode of All Aware. I'm your host, Nathan Roshan, and like always, you are all aware. See you next time.